Okay guys, so it's finally time to do the review of the X-Pride A. Now a lot of you guys who have no experience with the X-Pride probably looking at this rod right here and thinking that this is the new X-Pride A when it's actually the old X-Pride. Here's the new X-Pride A right here. And visually, other than the fact that the cork on the old X-Pride is used and dirty, can you really tell a difference between the two? Now there are some very small cosmetic differences, like the four-nut is smaller on the new model versus the old one, and then they changed the paint job on the real seat from a nice glossy coating with some sparkly flake to a soft touch matte coating. But other than that, visually, they look pretty much the damn same. And that's one of the main reasons why I never got one of the new x Prize when they first came out. Because I'm the type of guy that, you know, I don't like buying two of the same thing. I want to try new things. Now, I've had the old x Pride for several years. I imported this from Japan. And I've got to fish it before they even brought these over to tackle warehouse and it became my most used rod but unfortunately a couple years after fishing it the tip broke off now that wasn't from fighting a fish it was actually my fault the rod was behind me when I was fishing another rod and I hit it on my backswing and broke the tip off but like I said, I'm the kind of guy, I don't like to buy two of the same kind of tackle. I like to try new things. So I never bothered replacing this rod with another X-Pride. Up until now, with this new X-Pride 8. Now you guys can thank Tactical Bassin for this review because those guys are the ones who actually got me to buy this rod. The good things they said about it. And a lot of you guys know who Tactical Bassin is. Those two guys are probably the only tackle review YouTube channel that I completely trust everything they say. But they said a lot, a lot of good things about this X-Pride. Now, once again, visually, you really can't tell the difference between the two. And on paper, Shimano didn't really give us any kind of, uh, I don't know, official specs as to what makes this new model different than the old model but I can tell you this the new model is thinner the blanks are thinner and Shimano does claim they are 10% lighter and just to let you guys know I have the 6 foot 10 medium which is the exact same model as this one the old one that I have now I bought this particular model because for the price of this sex pride it's going to give me more use than something that's bigger i like to fish a lot of jerk baits moving baits um i'm just now getting into more bottom contact stuff but i thought i would get more use out of this rod because the old rod i had i i used the hell out of that thing probably more than any other rod i had up until i broke it okay so let's just go over some basic specs i do not know what quality graphite this blank is. Now Shimano rolls their own rod blanks. They're not like other companies where you order blanks from somewhere and then you just kind of put your own little uh, color scheme and little touches on it. Shimano actually rolls their own rod blanks but they don't give us any kind of graphite rating on this blank. But it does still feature the High Power X wrapping just like the old model. But I can tell you this, the wrapping on the High Power X is a little bit tighter on the new model versus the old model. Now there's a lot of companies now that are copying this, this carbon tape X wrap on their rods. But Shimano is the only company I think, well actually Abu Garcia does it as well. But Shimano takes that X wrap all the way up from the bottom of the blank all the way to the tip. 
and that actually makes a, a big difference when you're casting the rods which I'll go over in another portion of this video but yeah other than that visually they look the same now more importantly non visually is where the big changes are now the X Pride A model is made just for the North American market and what they did was they gave it what they call more westernized lengths powers and actions so that means that most of the X Pride A rods will have a fast taper now if you go to Shimano Japan's website and look at their X Prides they mostly have a moderate fast taper and the old model was also a moderate fast taper which is this right here and as far as the length goes these range all the way from six foot six to I think almost close to ten foot long so you have more range of lengths than you do in Japan so I truly believe these new X prides are designed for the North American market in the way that we fish and another important thing is that in Japan if you buy a rod that's seven foot tall or above it's going to be two piece where the blank itself comes out and then you push it into the handle to make it you know one rod now with these new X Pride A's, I'm pretty sure that they're all one piece construction. You don't have to, you know, join two pieces together. And a lot of people say that's important for ultimate sensitivity. And the one last major, major improvement that I see is they lowered the price on this rod. And I'm not talking just, you know, 10 or 20 bucks or even 30 bucks. They lowered the price of these new X Prides by $90. Now the old X Prides, when they imported them here from Japan, they started out at, I believe, $350. While the new X Pride A's start out at only $260. Now that's still a lot of money, no doubt about it. But is it worth that money? is everything that Tactical Bassin said about this rod on point. Let's find out. Okay guys, so I'm out here testing the new X Pride A and I paired it with the reel that I used the most on the old X Pride I had, the 2015 Aldebaran 50. I've got 10 pound fluoro and uh, we're gonna see how this thing casts and try to remember how the old one casted so when I got my first generation X pride several years ago I really didn't like it at first and the main reasons were that it felt very stiff on the cast versus my other rods I had at the time and also the handle was a lot thinner than my other rods which caused some discomfort having to tighten my grip on the smaller handle over several hours of fishing. Now one day I was fishing with the X-Pride and I had it paired up with the Aldebaran 50 and I was just walking along this bank and I saw some movement about 40 plus yards away on the very edge of this point created by a boat ramp. So I fired a cast out hoping to be in the general vicinity, but the lure landed exactly where I was aiming. Now I didn't catch the fish, but I finally realized what Shimano was doing when they put the high power X wrapping on the rod. So I reeled in my lure and I kept firing cast after cast over and over to the same spot with all the casts landing within a foot of each other. The X Pride, as well as any other Shimano that has the high power X wrap all the way up the entire blank, really excels in long distance casting with pinpoint accuracy if you commit to the cast. Now that means following all the way through on your cast stroke and snapping your wrist at the end. Now, accurate casts in the short and medium range are easy to do, but long 100 foot plus casts are much harder to be pinpoint accurate. 
Now this new X Pride A is pretty much exactly the same as the old model in that respect for the most part that I found out. Okay guys, I'm out here and I'm gonna see if I can do a sensitivity test for the X Pride. And what better way to do a sensitivity test than to compare it against the benchmark in sensitivity, the G Loomis NRX. So I got both of these rods mounted with a Shimano Aldebaran with 10 pound fluoro. And I think the best bait for this is gonna be the Magnum Ned rig. So I have both rods and reels set up with a Magnum Ned rig. And we're gonna see if we can feel any kind of difference, hopefully get some bites and uh, see if we can see any kind of difference in uh, feel for the bottom as well as strike detection. So let's see what happens. Okay, so first up is gonna be the uh, X Pride. I'm just gonna cast it around and drag this Magnum Ned rig around for about 15 minutes and then we'll switch up to the NRX. Feels like mud. Oh, fish on the first cast. Ugh. Wow. That was quick. <laughs> bass on the first cast so that means no more fish for the rest of the day it's not a big guy but it's still a fish here we go okay guys so right there I cast it out and immediately I could tell that the bottom was mud and then I started getting into some rocks or some riprap and then I could definitely feel the fish strike that lure and I can definitely tell when it had the bait in its mouth. So so far X Pride is so far pretty impressive. Oh, man. Come on. Okay, NRX fish. 
a little bit bigger than the X Pride, but uh, the take was totally different. It was very subtle, but I could definitely tell something took the bait and there was that mushiness, that feeling of mushy resistance. And I knew it was a fish, so I was able to set the hook. This one didn't get away. Not a bad fish, probably one and a half pounds. Okay, let's see if we can get a fish like that on the X Pride and see if there's a difference. Good one. Oh, and he swallowed the shit out of this Ned rig. go bass on the Ned rig it's probably like a pound and a half Okay guys, so this is where it gets really, really good and really eye-opening. So I took both the X Pride A and the NRX to several different spots that day, just hopping and dragging that Magnum Ned rig around looking for a bigger bite. Now as you can see, I didn't get to test the bite detection on the X Pride on a bigger fish until the following weekend, but I can confidently say that the X Pride A felt just as sensitive as the NRX when dragging and hopping that Ned rig all over 
all sorts of different bottom composition, whether it was mud, rock, wood, vegetation, I could not detect any kind of difference. But more importantly, I could just as easily detect when a bass gulped the Ned rig on the X Pride as I could with the NRX. Now, to be honest, I didn't expect the X Pride to be this sensitive because I have a first generation Poison Glorious rod that cost almost twice as much, and I am not very impressed with that rod sensitivity at all. So, once again, the guys at Tactical Bassin were correct as usual. The X Pride A is a very sensitive rod at not only its own price point, but pretty much any price point. But if I had to split hairs and absolutely had to pick a winner in sensitivity, it would still be the NRX and just barely though, because I remember one or two times where it seems like I felt slightly more reverberation on the NRX when hitting a rock. So if the NRX is a 100 on the sensitivity scale, the X Pride is definitely going to be a 98 or a 99. And that's pretty amazing considering it's half the cost of the NRX. Okay guys, so hopefully you can tell by now that I am very, very impressed with this new X Pride A. It is totally just as sensitive as my NRX. Now, I just have to clarify one thing though. Apparently if you check out the reviews of the G Loomis NRX, there are some models in their lineup that are more sensitive than others according to people who own those rods. And I'm not sure, you know, how my 803C NRX stacks up to, you know, what's the most sensitive rod in the lineup. But yeah, this thing is just as sensitive as the NRX. And there was just only a couple of times where I felt a slight more reverberation with the NRX than the X-Pride when dragging that Ned rig over some rocks. So that's very, very impressive coming from a rod that is generally considered probably the lower mid-range end of Shimano's lineup in Japan. And like I said, they don't even give this blank any kind of, you know, graphite rating. So it's just some kind of blank that Shimano rolled. And it makes me wonder if this X Pride is this sensitive, how sensitive, you know, is that new Adrena? How sensitive is the Poison Ultima? So I'm really, really considering ordering a Poison Ultima now. Now this thing is actually more versatile than the NRX I have as well. With its fast rating on the tip, this thing is not as stiff as the NRX, so you can you know, work moving baits like jerk baits and other small treble hook baits with no problem. And then of course, it's about half the cost of the NRX as well. So yeah, Shimano X Pride A, super, super impressed. And let's go ahead and go over the ratings. Now, when it comes to build quality, this thing is technically still, you know, a JDM model and it's gonna get a 10 out of 10. The blank is completely straight. The guides are all straight. There are no kind of, you know, excess epoxy or any kind of sloppiness in the build of this rod. The cork is good quality. I don't see very much filler. It's just an overall nice looking rod. It's very, very understated in its looks which a lot of you guys like that. So build quality, of course, is 10 out of 10. Now, here's a new rating that I'm gonna be giving rods, and that's crispiness rating. Now to me, crispiness is the stiffness of a rod combined with the weight. So a super lightweight, stiff rod gives that really crispy, hollow, lively feeling and I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10 on the crispiness scale. Now let's talk about casting next. Now the strong suit for the old model was casting in my opinion. Now of course I didn't really fish the old model for a lot of bottom contact techniques, 
but I'm gonna give this thing a nine and a half out of 10 on casting. It still excels in really, really long distance precise casting. So let's say I need to put a bait in front of that uh, little soccer net that's probably about 45 yards away. And I have to hit, let's say that, uh, that right corner post there with the X Pride because of its high power carbon tape wrap you can probably hit that target a lot easier than you would with another rod if you really really commit to the cast now I don't give it a 10 out of 10 because I think the old model with its moderate fast action or taper was a little bit more suited for casting than this fast taper uh, X Pride A model okay so sensitivity now when you're just as sensitive as the benchmark G Loomis NRX but you're only about half the cost you can only get a 10 out of 10 when it comes to sensitivity you can literally feel exactly the same things as the NRX especially more importantly the take of the lure so I was able to catch a couple of bigger fish with both rods and of course, every single fish take is going to be different, but I could tell when the fish swallowed that Magnum Ned rig very, very easily with this X Pride. I would say even more so than that NRX, but of course, the takes could have been different. So, to me, sensitivity that's what's most important, not really feeling what kind of things you're running into, but when a fish takes your bait so you don't miss the chance of setting that hook. Now, Tactical Bassin, they wouldn't sit there and say, you know, this rod is more sensitive than that rod. But when Tim Little said that this thing is as sensitive as any rod at any price point, he wasn't kidding. Okay, so overall verdict on this rod is that if you can afford one, get it, especially if you're a hardcore bass fisherman. This rod is so versatile. You can do pretty much almost anything with it. Fish bottom contact, fish moving baits. And I know the price for a lot of people is kind of high. That is true, even though they lowered it. But you can do like I did. You can wait for a sale to come. Now I ordered this rod at 20% off from Tackle Warehouse. Took advantage of their Black Friday sale. So it only cost me $207. So that is right around Shimano Zodius territory. But this rod is far superior to the Zodius. I have two Zodius while they're okay. This rod is a lot more lively than those Zodius rods. Now, one thing I will tell you, this thing is very hard to get. Hard to get in the fact that I ordered this rod once again, Black Friday, 2018. I didn't get it until mid to late March 2019. Now, in fact, I totally forgot I had ordered it until it showed up on my doorstep one day. And I was like, oh yeah, I ordered that damn X Pride on Black Friday. So if you can wait, then it's definitely worth it in my opinion. But uh, yeah, Shimano X Pride A, there's the review and thanks a lot.